Okay, today we're going to look at uh, finding the particular solution to trig functions. Now, that is to say, solving trig functions. This part of the topic doesn't really involve anything more difficult than understanding of bed mass and basic algebraic rearranging. The hardest part to understand here is why we do what we do and what the answers mean. So that's what we'll spend time on. Uh, but first, we'll start with an example. Uh, before we even get into the trig stuff, solving two equations. So if we've got one equation, y equals 2x plus 1, and we've got another equation, just y equals 9, just a value, we want to find when is this equation 2x plus 1 equal to 9. All we have to do to work this out is remember bed mass and set brackets is the thing we do last. Um, so to work backwards from the plus 1, we have to minus 1. To work backwards from the times by 2, we have to divide by 2, and that leaves us with x equals 8. So when is 2x plus 1 equal to 9? Well, when x is equal to 8. All you have to do is remember your order of operations. There's nothing more to it than that. And then you work backwards. So that's why we did the plus first, and then we got rid of the multiply by. Right, so taking an angle and working out the opposite divide the by the hypotenuse involves just using the function of sine. Sine takes you from an angle to a fraction. Uh, to go backwards, you just need to use inverse sine, which is the opposite. Same as uh, when we multiply by 2. When we multiply 2 by 8, we get to 16. If you want to go back, you do the opposite of multiply by 8, and that's divide by 8. And that gets you back to 2 where we started. So multiply and divide are two opposite operations. Sine, cos, and tan are just operations, same as the ones in bed mass. And they have inverse operations, inverse sine, inverse cos, etc. So if we look at this equation here, it looks quite complicated, but we just need to remember our bed mass. So sine of an angle, well in this case we've got 6 times sine of 2x plus pi over 2. Well the bit inside the brackets that hold 2x plus pi over 2, that's your theta, that's your angle. So we have to undo everything outside the brackets in order then worry about the brackets. So the first thing working backwards is subtraction. What's the opposite of the minus three? Plus three. So we add three to both sides. That leaves us with six times sine of everything inside the brackets equals to six. Now the next thing that's happening outside the brackets is a multiply by six. So the opposite of that is divide by six. So if we divide both sides by six, that leaves us with sine of everything inside the brackets equals to one. What's happening outside the brackets now? Well, we've got the operation of sine. So we have to decide, how do I undo this to get what's in the brackets? Well, the opposite of sine, inverse sine. So if we inverse sine to both sides to keep it equal, that leaves us with 2x plus pi over 2 equals inverse sine of 1. Now, if you don't know this, that's okay. You'll get used to this sort of idea. When is sine of an angle equal to 1? When is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse equal to 1? It's when they're the same, and it's when we're at 90 degrees, or pi over 2. So therefore, sine of pi over 2 equals 1. Inverse sine of 1 equals pi over 2 going backwards. So that leaves us with the equation 2x plus pi over 2. The left-hand side equals sine inverse of 1 equals pi over 2. The subtract pi over 2 from both sides, divide by 2, x equals to 0. So when is 6 sine, all that stuff, minus 3 equal to 3, when x is equal to 0? All right, that was just an example. What does it actually mean, though? Well, we've got a function. Here's another example. We've got um, the function y equals 3 times cos of all that stuff plus 1. And that's just a function that looks like that. That could be anything like a function of anything like the tide, the temperature, the distance of the moon to earth over time, anything. We want to know when is that at a particular value. So when is the height of the tide two meters above, um, above a stick that you have in the sand? Oh, bad example, but we've got a function of something represented by our trig function and we'll look at how we model those later and we've got a particular value that we're interested in we want to know when does our thing that we're modeling equal a particular value when does the tide equal two meters and here we go we can use desmos or jojoba to plot that so we've got a an example there when does it first equal two meters 
Well, it equals it when, when x, whatever x is, it might be time and hours or days or months. It equals it when it equals one point something. So we're just going to solve this now to see if we get if we get the right sort of answer. Well, what's happening outside the bracket? So first of all, we've got an addition, so we have to undo that with a subtraction. Uh, that leaves us with that whole thing equals to 1. Then the opposite of a multiplication, we divide both sides by 3. That leaves us with the equation cosine of the angle. The angle being 2x plus 2 pi over 3 equals to 1 over 3. Then we have to just undo the whole cosine thing. That leaves us with, on both sides, that leaves us with 2x plus 2 pi over 3 equals the inverse cos of 1 over 3. Now you don't probably don't know this off the top of your head but luckily your calculator does and it's 1.2310 rounded so um, we'll leave it we'll leave both answers there the cosine version and the decimal place uh, and I'm gonna have to subtract that whole thing at the end because remember we're trying to rearrange for x so that's going to be inverse cosine of 1 over 3 minus 2 pi over 3 and that's that's got a decimal answer too which is roughly uh, negative 0 0.86 and lastly we get x by itself we just divide both sides by 2 and that's this whole thing here um, I'm using a website called Wolfram Alpha to work this out so you type in something like that and uh, inv cos means inverse cos you'll use shift cos on your calculator and it gives me the answer just there so when does this whole equation here equal to 2 well it's when x equals negative 0 0.43 um, that's not the answer we we first clicked on but if I look just back here on my graph there it is there negative 0 0.432 that might, might not be the first answer you want um, but we're going to look at something called the general solution later on which helps you find any one of those solutions or rather it's an equation of the solutions but we'll look at that later for now and part of the general solution process is being able to find particular solutions, which we just did there.